I do have some fairly nice printers like these DIY printers, the Voronish 2 to the right and the Voronish 1 is the green one. And I also have a couple of P1S from Bambolab. The largest I can print on these printers that is 300 by 300 and on the Bambolab it's even a little bit less 256 by 256. It would be nice to be able to do some larger prints. And I could achieve that by buying uh, Tronxy, the VO1000, or maybe the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. That would be nice. The only problem is I don't have space or the funds to do this. I'm not going to let minor details like that stop me, so I started to draw something up in Fusion. I made several big changes during the design phase, but ended up with something that isn't too far away from this initial drawing. And this is the first iteration of the frame. My initial idea was to build this as a flying gantry printer with the bed static at the lower part of the printer, but I changed that later. I also improved these Y motor mounts later in the process. Based on the recommendation, I now use double shear on these Y motors. But let's get back to the 3D print room. I'll show you the current status of this build. And this is what the build looks like now. It's not that changed from the initial drawing, but you can see I made some changes. I added a skirt and also redesigned the motor mounts for Y. If we start looking at the frame, this is a combination of 4020 extrusions and 2020 extrusions. I had a lot of these 4020 extrusions in stock and I also kept the length I had on those, this could be even taller, but uh, I had to use what I had already. The most expensive part on this printer is the MGN12 rail. This is 1020 millimeters long. I didn't want to cut them. I could have cut them a little bit in both on both sides because it could start somewhere around here and end up somewhere around here. But I want to recycle this part and maybe use them in another printer later. So I just kept it as it is. When it comes to the kinematics, this is a Cartesian system with two Y motors. And you can see one motor on this side and the other on the other side. And they will have separate drivers as well. The x-axis is designed to support a standard stealth burner tool head and the carriage is mostly stock. I just made a small change so I could have a center belt instead of two belts like it is on the Voron Trident. And this is the standard 6mm belt. I forgot to mention but on the Y belts those are 9mm. And I used the beefy idlers, you, could have, you might have seen that on some of the other images as well. But this is a slightly modified beefy idler and I modified them to be able to mount them on to the extrusion without blocking the MGN rail. This is my completely redesigned set axis or Z axis. I'm using 12 millimeter rods and bearings and lead screws. It would have been better to use something like a ball screw or a stepper motor with integrated lead screw, but I haven't got that. So this is what I'm going to use. This is the redesigned front arms for the bed. And these are similar to the ones on the Warren Trident, but of course I adapted those to use with the 12 millimeter rods and bearings and the lead screw. The bed is firm and doesn't move, that's good. In some other footage in this video, you might see the old said arms, but I'm not going to use those, obviously. To accommodate this uh, design with the MGN rail in front of the extrusion, I had to add an idler so I could have the belt going smoothly inside the extrusion on one side and then in front of the MGN rail on the other side. Tensioning is by moving this part. 
I might change this later and do something with the tension screw here. I'll see a bolt. And this is the Y motor. It's difficult to see, but there is a bearing supporting the motor shaft below this stepper motor as well. Looking at the electronics, we can start with the power supplies. And I have three standard power supplies. And there's going to be three MOSFET boards to control the heated beds. This is the side skirt. I'm still waiting for some fans. I have two mains inlets on this. The left one will supply power to the heat bed two and three, and uh, the right one will supply heat bed one and control the cards. The intention is that I can switch on only one of them and use the printer as a normal 30 by 30, 300 by 300 printer. And then just switch on the second set of power supplies when I need them. Moving on to what is effectively the front of the printer. I have the caddy for electronics and some other electronics here as well. Inside this, you can see I have the controller card, controller board, SKR 1.4 and Orange Pi 02. And those are located behind the fan. So one of these fans will be blowing constantly and I will get a nice airflow across these components. The other three fans, there's one here, and it's going to be two here. They will be controlled by temperature. This electronics box at the side of the printer is going to be for the SKR Pico. And I'm going to do this just like I've done in some previous builds by using two controller cards and then just run USB cables from the controller cards and to the Orange Pi Zero. That will make for a very clean installation. This time I use uh, sensorless homing on the X axis, but I will use switches or switch on the Y axis. When the Y axis was all the way back, I will have a switch, limit switch here. I'll use a normal display on this side and the reason I've done it like this is I think I will probably most of the time operate the printer from this side. And that's where I'm going to get the best access to the printed parts. This is the heat bed assembly. It just consists of three standard heat beds connected together using 2020 extrusions. And these are fairly inexpensive 300 by 324 volt beds. I plan to get hold of a flex plate that can cover the complete 900 by 300 build plate. That's going to be quite expensive. The tool head for this build will be the stilt burner and I printed the cowling or the cover, front cover. I will be using my remixed adapter for the Bamboo Lab hot end. And the hot end I have is 0.6. I did consider using 0.8 or maybe one millimeters, but I, I think the 0.6 is a reasonable compromise. This is what the build looks like right now. In the next video, I hope to show you a printer that is doing the first print. Thank you for watching and goodbye.